Of course, this video is brought to you guys by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com slash 49ers for 20% off your first order plus free shipping. The link is down below in the description box. Again, manscaped.com slash 49ers. 20% off your entire order plus free shipping. Jump on that deal right now. Okay, as we talked about in the very, very beginning, in the opener, is our final 49ers roster projection and projection because as we know, the roster is officially going to be announced to Final 53 on Saturday. So we're going to do what I think the roster will look like. And then obviously on Saturday, we'll go ahead and do another video and see what changes were made to my final prediction. So here's my projected quarterback roster. Very, very simple. The depth chart is Garoppolo, Mullins, and C.J. Beathard. As we know, if this was last year, or this was a normal year, I should say, then we might not keep C.J. Beathard. You might just go Mullins and Jimmy Garoppolo. That being that it is a COVID year and anyone could get it at any given time, and you might need a good backup quarterback, even a good backup backup quarterback they will keep three quarterbacks here no problems there Garoppolo obviously QB1 Mullins is ready to go as one of the better backups there at QB2 and CJ Beathard in at number three we all know the deal with Jimmy Garoppolo we know the haters are out there and yet majority of us I'd say 97 percent of us in 49er land obviously understand Garoppolo was great last year and he's going to go ahead and be great this year as well the quarterback spot to me is the easiest one to go ahead and figure out what they're going to do they will keep three and Garoppolo will be at the point running the entire show as of course 49er fans are excited for to see now running back depth chart this changed from my previous video so you know i did this whole roster breakdown about three weeks ago and i said tevin coleman was not going to make the final 53-man roster that was based on his performance in training camp up to that point well guess what i think he's going to go ahead and make the roster and he'll probably start off as running back number two but as i have said you see there on the right side of your screen jared mckinnon at running back number three this guy's been making plays I mean, making a ton of plays so far in the 49ers training camp. He will obviously make the roster. And I think he's going to move his way up to being running back number two at some point. Now, Jeff Wilson Jr. is more than likely going to go ahead and make the roster as well as the fourth running back. But this is an area where if the Niners wanted to keep an extra wide receiver or an extra offensive lineman or whatever, Wilson would be the odd man out. Now, Juszczyk is technically on the running back depth chart, although he's a fullback, but he's obviously going to call Juszczyk Brock, so he's going to be there as well. Who's going to be the running back number two in 2020? Let's get those votes typed down below in the comment section. C down below for Tevin Coleman. Type M down below for Jeff McKinnon. Like I said, it'll probably start off as Tevin Coleman, like the depth chart will say Coleman, but McKinnon, if he keeps balling out, especially when we get to week one, he's going to inch his way up there. I would type M down below to go ahead and get put my vote in for Jeff McKinnon being the running back number two. All right, wide receiver. Wide receiver has gotten tricky this entire offseason. It got more tricky today with some injuries. More on that in a second. Samuel obviously is not going to start on the pup list, so he will start on the active roster even if he's going to be injured. Ayuk will most likely be good to go for by, by week one. He continues to nurse that hamstring injury. Bourne is your first, I guess, best healthy receiver. Pettis obviously makes the team. They just activated Richie James Jr. off of the uh, res or the uh, injured list with that wrist injury. Taylor's been good this offseason. And I think Poindexter is probably going to go ahead and be the final receiver on the depth chart. And you go, Thomas, wait, didn't they sign a bunch of guys over the past couple of weeks? The answer is yes. But as we found out a couple of hours ago, another one has been injured and placed on IR. So Tavon Austin, right? Dallas Cowboy, former LA and, and St. Louis Ram. He has a knee injury. He has been placed on IR. And so what they'll do is they'll have an injury settlement with him but essentially cut and release him just like they will do with J.J. Nelson. I thought Tavon Austin would go ahead and make the roster, but with this, that means Sean Poindexter probably slides right in to the seventh spot. Now, Kevin White, obviously, you know, the former number seven overall pick, he is going to be on the practice squad, in my opinion, but there is some people out there who say maybe it's Juwan Jennings, maybe it's Sean Poindexter, maybe it is Kevin White, but one of those three will be the seventh wide receiver. But everyone keeps saying Poindexter is going to be the guy, so that's where I go with there at number seven. How worried are you about the 49ers wide receiver injuries on a scale of 1 to 10? And they're dropping like flies, right? I mean, they have J.J. Nelson, Tavon Austin, and then the previous injuries to Debo Samuel and Jalen Hurd. Give me a scale from 1 to 10. Let me know down below right now in the comment section. Tight end got a little bit interesting because there has been some injuries at tight end. So Kittle 1, Reed 2, that's simple. But Charlie Warner, the rookie, is going to go ahead and be tight end number 3. It's not going to be Ross Dwelly because Dwelly has had an injury to the lower body the majority of camp. And Warner, honestly, he's looked a lot better in training camp. He's a much better blocker. So I believe Warner is going to go ahead and get the nod as tight end number three. But obviously, all the focus stays on George Kittle, who, yes, he's dealing with a hamstring injury right now. He's missed a couple of practices, but all signs are showing he's going to be ready to go for week one. And the numbers you see on your screen right now are going to be very similar, if not better, this year. I mean, these are fantastic numbers. 
but expect the touchdowns to to uh, to go up. The catches might go down a little bit, but the yards are going to stay basically the same. I mean, this is the number one target of Jimmy Garoppolo. The numbers you see right here is the reason why the first tight end and every single fantasy draft better be George Kittle. If you're drafting this weekend like I am, you better go ahead and get George Kittle. Before we keep going, right, we'll go to the offensive line next. Want to take a quick pause here for our sponsor, Manscaped.com. And the Lawnmower 3.0, if you see on your screen right there, they sent me a Lawnmower 3.0 about three months ago using it on a weekly basis. Absolutely fantastic trimmer manscaped.com slash 49ers you can go ahead and pick this one up 20 percent off plus free shipping whenever you use the link obviously down below comes with a bunch of different blade sizes comes with obviously the blade guard it's the perfect overall hair trimmer in my opinion great price great quality and all there again manscaped.com slash 49ers link just down below in the description box you get 20 percent off plus free shipping on your order it's a pretty good deal try it out you will not be disappointed i guarantee it okay Couple of news here in terms of the offensive line depth chart. Here's how your starting lineup is probably going to look, right? Because Western Richburg is going to go ahead and be on the pup list to start the season. So it'll be Williams, Tomlinson, Garland. They'll probably play Tom Compton at right guard. That's what they've been doing the majority of the uh, of the uh, offseason. And then McGlinchey will go ahead and obviously stay at left tackle. But this is what your starting offensive line is going to look like. Now, can Compton hold down the right side? Yes, he can. He's been pretty good so far in training camp. But that's kind of the deal with the whole – uh, no preseason games. These are options and players that would have gotten some better looks in preseason. And we just got to wait and see what happens week one against a revamped and new look Arizona Cardinal defense, which will obviously, you know, be trying to go ahead and get the quarterback. This is still a very good offensive line, especially the left side of that offensive line is absolutely fantastic. You guys are pumped about this offense. Give me a thumbs up. You guys think this offense is good enough to be a top 10 offense? I know they've had injuries and they might struggle a little bit in week one, but this is an offense that's going to get humming. I mean, they're going to start to hum week three, week four, week five. And I think they're going to be a top 10 offense for sure this year. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys agree right now. Okay, moving on. Let's go to the defense tier. We'll start with the defensive line. And this one is very straightforward and very simple, right? Nick Bosa, uh, Javon, uh, Javon Kinlaw, Eric Armstead, and D Ford will be your starters. Deion Jordan is going to be one to watch here. I have him still making the roster there as the backup defensive end. But I've been told he's not had a very great camp so far, and so they might go ahead and let him go. Deion Jones, I've been told, it's not a guarantee that Jones is going to make the final roster. I think he will. It's a personal preference. But as we said, things can change between now and Saturday. So this is where I think that they're going to go. They're going to go ahead and keep about nine to ten guys, depending on what they want to do with how many wide receivers and how many cornerbacks. But obviously the focus stays on Nick Bosa and the fact that this is a guy coming into his second year with higher expectations than probably any pass rusher in the NFL. I mean, let's be honest here. Bosa was so good his rookie year and has looked so good in his sophomore training camp that a lot of people are thinking the stats you see right there are going to be uh, pale in comparison to what he's actually going to be able to do coming up in the 2020 season. But overall, I think the defensive line, obviously the entire defense is going to look very similar to what it was last year with a couple of key changes. The best and biggest depth chart battle that I'm excited to see on Saturday is where they're going to place Greenlaw versus Alexander. And obviously, 53-man roster comes out. They might not do a depth chart until later on in the week. But for me, it's like, all right, is Greenlaw going to stay the strong side linebacker? He should, in my opinion. But could Kwan Alexander obviously move over there as well? It's yet to be seen. But, you're, but these are your three are your three linebackers. You obviously see Ziocha there on the bottom right as linebacker number five. Walker was the one I expected to be in my in my breakdown a couple of weeks ago. But Walker has had a worse camp than Ziocha, and he's been down on the depth chart the entire training camp. So it looks like Joe Walker will either be cut or be a practice squad guy. We'll talk more about that here in just one second. And like we said, we're going to break down the entire 53-man roster on Saturday. So this is going to be released probably sometime in the morning. As soon as it's there, I'm going to be getting on my computer. I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to get on my computer and film this stuff. And Dylan will produce and we'll have it up for you guys. A full breakdown. So make sure you guys are subscribed, right? If you're sub, you'll get the full breakdown because I'm sure there will be some crazy parts. Like, like someone's going to get cut that I don't expect. And it's someone's going to stay that I don't expect. And it's because I am not Kyle Shanahan and Kyle Shanahan is Kyle Shanahan. And so we'll break it all down, obviously, on Saturday. Okay, cornerbacks, 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 cornerbacks. There's some news with cornerbacks, but this is how it's going to look right now. You say, Thomas, wait, why is Emmanuel Mosley there cornerback number two? You said all offseason that Jason Barrett's going to be cornerback number two. The answer is, yes, he is going to be cornerback number two. But the problem is he has suffered a hamstring injury. We'll get to that in one second. But right now... Week one, this is how it's going to look most likely. Sherman, Mosley, and Williams is going to sit there in the slot because Jason Barrett has suffered a hamstring injury. And if, listen, if you are not surprised 
that another 49er has a hamstring injury, raise your hand right now because literally they keep getting hamstring injuries. I mean, Ayuk has a hamstring injury. Kill has a hamstring injury. Barrett has a hamstring injury. Bosa had a lower leg soreness, but probably a hamstring. I mean, like, well, stretch your hamstrings out. What's going on? Obviously, it's not their fault, but still, like, goodness gracious, so many hamstrings. But Barrett has a hamstring. He's day-to-day with the NFL season technically starting a week from today, and the 49ers starting a little over seven days away. I'm just going to be curious to see if he's going to be ready to go. If not, then obviously it will go ahead and be Emmanuel Mosley. The safeties, no changes here, although I think Cyprian is going to go ahead and make the final roster, so put him there as the 53-man guy. But your secondary looks pretty darn good and pretty darn similar to what I had, pre- had uh, predicted and projected just a couple of days ago. But again, the question is going to be, will Barrett be healthy for week one? And right now, that is completely up in the air. I would not be surprised if a couple of these guys, if maybe, uh, obviously, Debo, maybe Barrett, possibly even IU, go ahead and sit out week one. But they're still, you know, seven, eight, eight days away. So we have a little bit of time to figure things out. We'll have it all covered next week. And when and if we get the full official injury news. The defense overall, to me, looks good. I don't think there's going to be any big surprises. Maybe lower on the depth chart, but we'll break that down on Saturday. Do you guys think they're going to have a top five defense? And listen, they're pretty darn good. They better have a top five defense. Type Y down below for yes. Type N down below for no right now in the comment section. Without further ado, though, we can't skip out on our special teamers. Of course, Robbie Gold, Mitch Wisnowski, and uh, Nelson are going to go ahead and be the long snapper. No shocker there. But that, if you were doing your map right, rounds it out to 53. That's my 53-man roster projection. Again, is it going to be perfect? I think so. Will it be perfect? T- totally different story because I think they're going to have a l- tough decision there in terms of Kevin White, Sean Poindex- Poindexter, or Juwan Jennings being the, the excuse me being the seventh wide receiver. I'll have to wait and see what happens with that. But I would give this a solid B plus, a B plus grade because I'm not going to say here it's going to be perfect because it might not be. This is a pretty good overall final roster projection. Give me your grade right now in the comment section A B C D. Or, of course, F if you hated it. But I don't know why you'd put F because these are like all players that are going to make the team. So you're crazy if you do. But it's up to you. Go ahead and comment down below. Okay, practice squad. Let me tell you this. Practice squad is very hard to go ahead ahead and predict. It's extremely hard to predict because people might be cut right now, but eventually re-signed to the practice squad. So this is my best shot. Hasty, Harold, Dwelly, and Reynolds are all going to be there on the practice squad. Obviously, Ross Dwelly might start injured, but then he could come back up and could either be active or he could be on the practice squad. I think what a White and Juwan Jennings are going to go ahead and stay on the practice squad. And obviously, Kevin White just needs time to learn the offense, which is why you'd keep him there on the practice squad. Juwan Jennings has had a decent camp, but everyone says Sean Poindexter has had a better camp. That's why I moved him ahead of the rookie out of Tennessee. Other than that, though, there's nothing here that you would sit and go, that doesn't make any sense because it, it, it makes a lot of sense. But, for example, a guy like Joe Walker, who is a good special teamer and was probably going to be the fifth linebacker and then has gotten kind of booted out of that, they could just straight up cut him instead of signing him to the practice squad. So we just we rotate through these. It's very hard to go ahead and figure out who is going to be a practice squad guy, who is not going to be a practice squad guy. But as we said, we'll know who it is just a couple of days from now, and so we'll break it all down. The hard part is always, like we said, if you get cut, it does not guarantee you're going to be leaving the football team because they could re-sign you in a week to be on the practice squad, and the practice squad rotates around. So that's my best guess there. See a guy like Marcel Harris, uh, Flanagan Falls, against safeties that we thought could potentially make the starting roster, but after seeing what they did at training camp, the odds of that happening are very, very slim. 